Hello, it's nice to be here. So I'll go ahead and get started. Uh, what you're seeing right now is me logged in as a pretend user in a demo environment. So we'll be using this today unless there are specific questions that come up about specific leagues, in which case we might go over to those leagues. But while we give a couple more people a little bit of time to join, I'm going to introduce you to the documentation section, and then we'll start to see what questions you're bringing to this, this particular webinar today. So in order to get to the documentation, what I'm gonna do is scroll down to the very bottom of the page, and there's a little link here that says My League Online. That will take you to the homepage of Milo, which can also be accessed at my.lwv.org. And that homepage lists all of the leagues that have some kind of a presence on Milo, or at least a public presence. There are a number of other leagues that are not yet public. And so you can actually take a look at some of those other leagues as examples that you might want to follow or uh, leagues that you can talk with about how they accomplish certain things because everybody's customized in different ways, which is fun to see. You can also, from this page, you will always see a rotation of a new link. Every time I refresh this page, I'll see a new little webmaster tip. And these are kind of quick tips for that address those kinds of questions that come up more frequently than others. So you might just find it fun to come here and just refresh often to get a little bit of a did you know insight. Here in the menu on the left, we have a documentation link. And if you click on that documentation link, if you clicked on it a few weeks ago, it might have been a little bit overwhelming and you probably stopped there. But we have reformatted this entire section and we've added some improved documentation as well. So hopefully this is a significantly better resource for you and it is continuing to grow. So what we have here initially at the top of the documentation page is a link to Milo Essentials for Beginners. And even if you're not a beginner, it might be worth reading through this because it gives you kind of an, an overview of how Milo operates. And it gives you an idea, it gives you some inspiration sites, it gives you an idea of what happens when you get started and where things are. And this is really the longest documentation page that we have because it's basically a step-by-step -step guide. All of the other documentation pages that we have are short little tidbits or snippets that you can access to answer a specific question. The next item that we have here, the quick reference, this is a listing of some of the most common questions that people come to us with. So we aggregated those at the very top to try to make it easy for you to get to those questions. We also have a YouTube channel that's linked right here that you can use to access videos that we've put up of how to do things. But this is right down here is really the meat of the documentation. We have sorted the documentation snippets out into sections so that there's categories. If you know that what you're looking for is under a specific type of category, you can narrow down to that category. You can also narrow down to a specific category up here so that you're just seeing those items. But you can also use this to search for something. So if you know that you're looking for help with something related to Facebook, if you type in the keyword Facebook, it will narrow down to only that documentation that's specifically focused on Facebook. And you'll notice that the word Facebook is not in any of these titles, but Facebook is mentioned in the content of each and every one of these. And if you click on them, then you'll see that little snippet of help information with, with a lot of screenshots showing you how Facebook or LinkedIn or other resources will work. So I wanted to make sure that everyone is aware that this resource has been dramatically expanded and improved, and we're continuing to work on it as we go. Um, the three key links, the glossary, the essentials for beginners, and the YouTube channel are also linked under documentation. So with that quick introduction in place, now I'm hoping that we have some questions that have come in that we can start answering. I'm sure that some of you came with specific questions. And I know, Elizabeth, you were wondering how many people who've come to this particular webinar came to our workshop at convention. So if we can 
go ahead. I was, and if, if folks are able to do this, they can um, click the hand raise button and show me that, that things are working properly also, it would be a good test. Um, so if, oh, I see hands raised. Okay, so if the hands were raised, this means that you were at our League of Women Voters of the United States uh, convention in Chicago and perhaps attended our workshop. So I see um, Jean Dugan, Jane Blackie, Angie Dunlap, and Judy Meyer all came. So thank you so much for being here. Um, I know we were telling folks about this webinar um, during that workshop. Um, so with that, um, I'm looking to see if anybody has any questions yet. I don't have any in the chat box yet. Um, so if anybody has any questions, can we put them in the chat box? And or you, if you feel as though you don't know how to use the chat box, um, perhaps you can try clicking on the question button, and maybe I will call on you if that's a bit easier than than typing out the questions, because I do not yet have any in my chat box or in my question box. So I'm I'm willing to try that. But I will throw out there while we're waiting for folks to figure that out, um, is that. Um, we can also um, use the search bar for any time you have questions um, in this documentation feed. There are questions there. And we also have a Google group um, that we have that's sort of a peer-to-peer -peer support group. So if you have a question about, hey, how did you guys do this? Or your site looks amazing. How did you do that? Um, you're welcome to um, be added to our Google group uh, for Milo users. And that link can be found um, in the first link I provided in chat to our Milo page. If you click on that, it will take you um, to the Google group and we will add you. And here I do have some questions, fantastic. Um, Let's see, this is a great basic question that we can answer um, from Jane Blackie who asked, how long does it take on average to move a site to Milo? That's a great question, Jane, for, thank you for asking that. And honestly, it really ranges on a, and has a couple of factors that will impact um, how long that will take. One, um, if we are moving the content for you, we do offer a content migration package uh, for 15 pages for $200. And so, of course, that means that the more pages you have, the more time it's going to take to migrate, whether we do it or you do that yourself. Um, we do have a couple links that sort of offer some quick start guides or, you know, things to think about. Um, but this is a great time to do some housekeeping on your site and decide what content is the most important for you to move over. For most folks, it takes anywhere between two weeks and two months uh, to move their content. And again, that means they're probably not doing it every day if they're in the two month mark. Um, um, or they have multiple webmasters, so it's taking a little bit longer to get there, or a ton of content. So again, anywhere from two weeks to two months, depending on how many users you have, how much help you need, and how much content you have. So I hope that answers your question. Feel free to ask for clarification if it did not. Yeah, and I'd like to weigh in on this one, Elizabeth, because I think sure. that this is an important one for people to understand. Um, so when you're when you're migrating your site, uh, Elizabeth mentioned this is a great opportunity for you to do some housekeeping on your site. Uh, I do a lot of user research studies and working on information architecture. And one of the kind of bottom line realities that we found is people don't read on the web. And the more that you offer on your website, the less that people will actually engage with it. So it is a really good opportunity for you to take a look if you've had a site that's been around for you know, 15, 20 years or even just five years, you probably have stuff on that site that is actually hindering the ability to get your message out as opposed to helping you because it's it's just extra material to get through. So paring down or housekeeping what you have before moving to a new environment, or even if you're gonna stay on your environment, that can be a very time consuming process, especially when you're talking about league members, uh, because you're talking about a lot of people who are deeply invested in what's up there and, and the written word and the message that's being put forth. And conversations do need to be have uh, do need to be had and sometimes votes need to be had as well. So it's it's important that while Milo at, at the at the baseline, you could actually move over to Milo in the matter of a couple of days, even if you don't have a lot of time, because there's a lot of base content that 
is up right off the bat. And if you just put up your essentials, you actually have a decent website uh, pretty, pretty immediately. Uh, but the real work for you isn't the technical work. It's looking at your content and deciding what actually needs to be there and what doesn't. And this, I, I would strongly urge you, we have had some leads that have decided they don't have time to pare down their content and they just moved it straight as it was. And that's fine because at least now they're on a system that they're, they're more comfortable on, but, and that has uh, more longevity. But uh, the reality is that that's not going to benefit you as well as if you uh, let this be your, your opportunity. And this is your best opportunity because it's going to be harder to do when you already move just because then everything's already there than it is to do when you're moving. But that's not a technical issue. And that, that's, that's a, um, a decision issue and a conversation issue within your league. Thanks, Rain. That's super helpful. And again, just to reiterate that we do have template content in there. And this also includes, if you're a California league, this, this includes information about Voters Edge California, including the ballot lookup widget. And in the case of leagues outside of California, it includes the Vote 411 information and widget under voting. So that's already been added for you. Um, and this is kind of a great follow-up question, actually, because lots of folks in league like PDFs. So we have a question here that um, says, could you say more about not using PDFs and what is better? <laughs> Absolutely. I love this question. And I know that this question is probably coming up because I've been a bit of an evangelist for not using PDFs uh, for, for a while now. So I'm sure you've been hearing this. Um, so PDFs, there, there's actually nothing wrong with PDFs when they're used correctly. And, and I don't want to, I regret that I've really given the impression that I'm completely anti-PDF. So let's kind of backtrack a little bit and talk about a very technical, uh, technical consideration when you're thinking about content on the web. There, the content on the web comes in two forms. It comes in blobs and chunks. Blobs are basically just big blobs of stuff that can't be parsed in any meaningful way. A PDF is a blob. It, it, it is what it is, and it, it can't really be um, aggregated or bits and pieces can't really be pulled out of it. So if you're, for example, putting up a PDF flyer of an event, then the date and time and location of that event are not separate pieces of data that can be used in interesting ways to get your event publicized outside of your website. Um, also, the other disadvantage to PDFs is that they're not very accessible. They're, the accessibility on PDFs is getting better now that um, text recognition is improving, text recognition technology. So screen readers are definitely more capable of reading through the text on a PDF than they were even a year ago. But what's still not great with PDFs is uh, somebody who's coming to your site using a mobile device, that PDF is going to look extremely small and the text on there is going to be small. So it's not a friendly way to deliver content to an increasingly mobile audience. And while you may feel like mobile is not that important for your league, we have been watching analytics and we do see that about 30% of league of the league audience is using mobile, exclusively mobile. And around elections, we see that that number actually rises to over 50%, which is probably people who are, who are going to vote or a, um, a kind of more, uh, millennial audience who's finally actually paying attention to what's out there for election resources because they have to at the moment. Um, so keeping that in mind and knowing that these numbers, you know, for, for an average website, mobile is now more than 50% of the audience for, for a typical standard website. Um, the league is a little bit different and education is, is also different, uh, but, um, Keeping that in mind and, and seeing that trends are moving more mobile, the more that you put your positions or things like that out on PDF, uh, the less people are going to actually be able to engage with that content. Now, we do fully understand that PDFs are important in things like, you know, 20 page studies or these beautiful publications. You know, LA put out a beautiful publication um, having to do with homelessness. And there's no way that that's going to go into a text format on the website. 
So in those cases, PDFs are very meaningful. They, they are um, you know, print documents that are also being made available to people through your website. So we have made sure that you can easily attach PDFs to content. However, you should only think of the PDF as an ancillary attachment to something that is text-based on your website. And so what I mean by that, I'm currently logged in. I created a, a very basic demo site here uh, that has almost nothing on it that I created for convention. And what I mean by text-based is I mean literally, you know, if you have, for example, this um, event coming up, you want to make sure that you add it as an event and that you fill out all of that key information in here and you don't rely on your PDF flyer. Instead, you rely on your body content and the text in there as opposed to on your PDF flyer to present that information to your user. The PDF flyer can be attached and you can say, hey, if you wanna you know, uh, promote this somewhere, here's a beautiful flyer that we created, or if you wanna look at our beautiful flyer, here it is. But in no way should that flyer be necessary for the user to have the key information that they need about the event. Hopefully that answers the question. I think it might. And I'd also like to add to, um, by not using the PDF or only using it as the you know additional piece of information, it allows people to share your information about your event mm -hmm. or your study or whatever much more easily using the social media shares. So you're gonna mm -hmm. reach a much broader audience by making that available to people. Um, yes. So let's go to our next question. Um, from Helen Geisick, I'm um, sorry if I'm not saying that correctly. Uh, she said, my Facebook colleague asks if there's a way to be notified by email of an action alert, um, whoops, of an action alert that has been posted on the website so it can be shared with members. Well, I have two comments about that and you might need to clarify for us a little bit. Um, but one, we are working with uh, LWVUS and they have their own Milo site, if you will, and they are posting action alerts there that will you are subscribed to so they will be automatically posted to your website. Um, oh, that's optional. Sure. Let, yeah, let me just jump in there. That you don't, you don't have to be subscribed to the LWVUS action alerts, it's, that's optional. But we do highly recommend it. It takes a step away from you so that you don't have to do that. Um, in addition, if you're sharing in social media, you're able to share the, you know, the post that they've already created. As far as an email notification, um, as when when we've posted it, that does not currently take place. But if you have received an email action alert, you should be getting those emails that you have signed up for from either LWVC and or LWVUS, in which case you could forward that email that you have received to everyone. Um, did yeah, you want to add gonna, anything uh, else yeah. to that? I'm going to add to this because I think one of the things that you're kind of interested in by asking that question is uh, is having Milo itself or your Milo site be a source for notifications to email uh, or, or having that option. And right now, Milo isn't servicing email for a lot of very complicated reasons. So no, at the moment, it won't send notifications. However, that is not impossible functionality and as the uh, system matures if we see that there's uh, enough of a use case for people to want to be able to make use of that kind of functionality then that's something that the Milo team can put into the long-term feature list depending on what leads want to actually use it for the way that things work right now what you would do is you would post your action alert uh, so here's some action alerts that LWV US has posted um, and if I oh actually they they haven't put them into their main action alert feed but these are here on their homepage. so these are action alerts that they've posted and when you go to any of those action alerts or any piece of content on a Milo site there are share widgets here as well. So once you post something, you can, uh, these share widgets are open to the public, but you can also use this, and a lot of leagues do use this, to share yourself so that you will kind of only have that, that two step. You say, okay, well, I've posted my piece of content. Now I want to share it to our Facebook page. So you just click on your little widget and then it will take you over to Facebook. It'll pull the information based on a lot of parameters that uh, we've set up. 
and then you can determine where you want to share it to if you're you know i'm a member of multiple groups and pages so uh, it's going to depend on how i actually want to post this but that makes it a lot easier for you because then you don't actually have to open up facebook you can literally just make that work from here without having to take uh, without having to take that extra action great thank you rain and um a I'm going to answer kind of an easy question here from Karen. Is there a cost to migrate if we do it ourselves? No, there is not a cost if you're adding all of your own content from one site to the other. Um, and again, uh, there's just the startup fees, which you can find on the, the link I provided in chat. It has more information about those costs. Um, can I add something about migration really quickly? Sure. Okay, so so there's two types of migration. Actually, there's kind of three types of migration. One is not really a migration. You just decide that you're going to start clean, uh, which is a great way to go. And I actually would strongly urge you to consider it if it's realistic. For many leagues, it wouldn't be. But if it is realistic for you, you would have probably the nicest site by doing that. Um, if you can't start clean, if you're going to migrate, then there's two other types of migration. Um, there's the migration from an HTML based site, which means that you literally have to manually copy and paste whatever you want to move over bit by bit. And that's the case with any of the League Easy websites. So if you're a League Easy web subscriber, that's why there's this migration package that LWVC is offering to help people out because unfortunately it is a step by step. HTML is blob. We can't parse that in any way. If you happen to be using a CMS-based website, a content management-based website that is currently built in something like WordPress or Drupal and you're moving over to Milo, we can actually set up a migration script for you. And so it would be a very different migration assistance than the $200 package that California is offering. So what you would wanna do is get in touch with Elizabeth, let her know, and then I would basically need to take a look at your website. You would tell her what you want to migrate, and I would take a look at it and see what's been configured properly in the database that we could script, and then figure out exactly how long it'll take for us to write those scripts, which will be significantly faster than migrating even 15 pages manually, um, so that we can script that and just automatically pull all of your content in. So I want to make sure that you're aware that options available because um, it, if you are coming from WordPress or something like that, it can save you a lot of time and mean that you can then retain a lot of your really ancient content if you want to. And by the way, when I say really ancient, when you're talking about the web world, anything five years and older is deemed ancient. Thank you, Rain. Okay, <laughs> here's another question. Um, in terms of formatting the website, is the website built on Milo going to be automatically responsive or do we have to format it or format it to be responsive ourselves? I, I think <laughs> what you're asking is um, about our template and Rain, do you want to talk about the formatting work on our template and maybe show an example of how that works? Let me show this. Um, so I'm going to, I'm just going to go to LA because LA is a good one with both the way that it should work as well as the one problem that does exist. Okay, so I'm um, assuming by responsive, you're actually talking about uh, mobile friendly and responding to uh, the various devices that people might use. So we did build Milo to be fully responsive and mobile friendly. You'll see it adjusting here. And by the way, um, it's it'll load nicer if you if you just load it. So of course I'm authenticated, so it's a little bit different than if I weren't authenticated, meaning I'm logged in. You'll see that the, the menu changed. We have a mobile friendly menu here. Um, and this is touch. This is, this is fully touch activated. It's a lot better when you're on touch than it is when, um, when you're using it as a web browser. So it is fully responsive off the bat. There is, however, one problem, which is embed code. So you'll see that this video right here is extending beyond the, the frame. And this is actually a problem that we are going to be addressing pretty soon so it's on our list to come up with a better solution to make sure that videos embed as responsive items as well and adjust to the frame um, 
so just be aware that anytime that you see something that doesn't work the way that you want it to, either we're already addressing it or we'd like us we'd like you to make us aware of it so that we can address it. Uh, because also, you know, the system is so huge, even we haven't tried everything that it can do. Um, and you might find something new. So uh, just let us know. But um, the system itself is fully responsive and, and was designed to behave that way. Uh, we actually repeat the menu down here at the bottom, even though it's accessible up here through this hamburger at the top, just because we wanted to be redundant. And um, also the, well, actually the, another thing that we're fixing is this phone number is not currently clickable, but it is meant to be clickable. So that's something that we're working on. And we have set it up so that you can actually create clickable phone numbers within your content. Um, does that answer the question? I think so. And while you have mentioned that about items that we're fixing and different feature enhancements, um, I want to add and share with the group that, you know, Milo is crowdsourced, if you will, in that we are user centric. So we did a beta testing before rolling out Milo to find out what leagues wanted, what they needed, um, and what were their priorities. So, and that's the way we created Milo, but this work is ongoing. So as you are working within the Milo system and you go, you know, that doesn't really work the way I want it to, or I wish that I had this other thing, um, we take all of those suggestions seriously and we put them in a sort of feature requests list and we track them. So, you know, if we get five people saying they want this clickable phone number, we're going to add the clickable phone number, you know, based obviously on, you know, budget and timing. Um, but we will get there on all of those features. And again, it's an ongoing improvement that we'll always be doing based on what leagues need and how the sites are working um, as, as we move forward. Um, so to that, uh, and I think there was another question here, and I would just like um, maybe Rain, if you could show it again. And that came from uh, both Karen and Emily were asking about um, automatically uh, showing, or excuse me, sharing posts from Milo to social media. So mm -hmm. I'm wondering if you could just show the share section again and show the different options that are listed there in share because um, there are a couple different places you can see that little square rain's about to show us um, that yeah. will offer you different ways um, and places to share your content, um, which is as we are looking at our um, our web traffic reports are increasingly popular. So Rain, can you show us an example of how things are shared again? Yeah, and I'm actually going to show you from this event because I also want to show you how you can control what gets shared. Uh, as as the owner of a site so anyone whether i'm authenticated or not let me zoom in on this a little bit whether i'm authenticated or not i will see this share widget on every piece of content and when i click on it we might actually change this to the little buttons i think people might like the little buttons better but we have the menu because it makes it clear that you can add to anything and again, you know, you can give us feedback as to what you prefer. This is this is a breathing, living, breathing system that, as Elizabeth said, is crowdsourced or really owned by you. But um, when the user or you click on this, you'll click whichever item you want to share to, and then the interface that it opens up is not a Milo interface. The interface that it opens is specific to the platform itself but it will automatically pull content based on what is set up within the piece of content itself. So this piece of content is set up to correctly pull this image and, uh, and the title and the summary of this particular item. Um, I can also indicate what I share it to. My window looks a lot different than yours because I am a member of many groups and an admin on over 20 pages. So I have to be very specific. If it's more limited, then you just get to kind of choose between a couple of things. Um, and then you can write whatever you want the same way that you would if you're sharing another post. You can also indicate who you're sharing to if you want to and, and uh, tag people. So it gives you kind of a lot of options here. So this can be very useful. Uh, now, what is chosen when you share is also kind of an important question. And we have a lot of documentation on this that you might want to read through. But when I decide to edit this piece of content, we'll click there and scroll down. Um, OK, so you'll see that that big image that you were looking at, or that was a teaser, is here in under main image. 
and that's where I've added it. That's very important because by default, the system is looking for the main image as the item to share to the social media platform. The title is also being looked for. And then there's another item that it's looking for, which is called the summary, the content summary. By default, the content summary is always going to be the first two or 300 characters of your body field. And on some content types, you know, your, your event, your article, your action alert, those are all different types of content. On some content types, it's called body. On others, it's called description based on what makes sense within the form. But it's the same thing. This field, this kind of main text field that you have for your content, the first two to 300 characters is what's being pulled as the, as the summary for Facebook or Twitter or whatever. If you see this little link right next to the word body and click on it, notice that it opens a text field that doesn't have all of these formatting options because those formatting options can't go to use social media and don't belong in your summary. And you can actually grab different text if you'd like to or write whatever you'd like to put into that and actually determine rather than having it take the first two or 300 characters on you. And just to scroll down a little bit further to show you more of the control, I'm not gonna go into how this works because that could take a long time. And again, we have some great documentation that I'm very proud of because my husband wrote for me because I was busy. Um, so it makes me very happy that he got involved in that way. Uh, but we have some very nice documentation here that he's created telling you how this whole thing works. Uh, so there's this on every piece of content, there's this, this meta tags tab. And you'll see these items in here that are called tokens. These are your defaults. So it's taking the summary. And if you like the defaults, just leave this alone. Don't adjust it. But if you want to override the defaults for any piece of content, if you wanted, for example, this description to be, this is an amazing event, instead of whatever is coming from your content itself, then you can override that in here. You can also override um, the image itself. So that's uh, that's right in here where it's taking the image so you could actually tell it to look for a different image if you wanted it to and um, there's a lot of interesting text here that you can look at as well this is definitely more advanced functionality the defaults make sense so you don't really need to touch this because the defaults are part of the content they make sense they're usually very good but sometimes people do want to do something different than the default and this is where you would be able to do that and that's my and actually, um, a point of clarification, um, Emily was asking actually a little bit more, not just about the sharing, but she meant um, about integrating across different platforms. So uh, you mean sending it to different, um, different websites, sharing with different websites? I think that's what she means. Yes, okay. she's saying okay. yes. Great, great. Okay. that's. Um, so all of the content let's see this what i don't know how much i've put into this little demo guy um here we go so under upcoming events there's one event all of our content that is feed based in any kind of way that people might want to uh, syndicate uh, syndicate would be what you know if you I, I love the example of having your local library post your league events um so they would syndicate your events they would take an rss feed from you and have that feed uh, pull you, their, your events into their content. So this little link right here, if you click on it, it's gonna either give you this no RSS reader is installed, depending on what type of browser you're using, or let me grab the link here, copy link, and I'm gonna open up um, a web browser that actually will show me the, uh, the RSS feed. It's going to look like a bunch of code because that's exactly what it is. Actually, this looks a little bit nicer. Some of them will look like HTML code, but I forgot that Firefox actually reads it nicely. So this is the data that's available. And if there were multiple events, then all of that data would be available here. So uh, that's something that you can give to somebody who wants to syndicate your content or they can just grab it because that little link is right there. And typically when a developer knows that they're trying to grab content or someone knows that they're trying to grab content, they know to look for that icon 
So it should be pretty straightforward, but if they don't, then you can grab that URL for them by just right clicking on that icon and then copying the, the link. Um, we can also very easily create, uh, if you have a developer or somebody asking you for a JSON or XML feed, if you don't know what that means, then just put it out of your head. And if somebody asks you for them in the future, it'll be a little light that goes off and you'll say, oh, okay, that's what that is. Um, if somebody asks you for that kind of technical language, then we can create those. It's not that difficult for us to create those, but those are customized based on what they need in that feed. So we would need you to say, I need this feed and I need it to contain these elements. And then we would create that for you. An RSS feed is really just kind of, um, for lack of a better word, it's just kind of a robot bar. <laughs> it's like, okay, here's all this stuff in here and do with it what you will but um but we can create more customized feeds if needed i love robot barf that's hilarious rain um yes so <laughs> emily was asking if there was anything outside of the rss feed there is so so there's that and then of course there's the ability to create custom ones for you as needed which really isn't that complicated um the other thing that I, it's not really what you're asking about, but is also really important to make sure that everyone is aware of, is that we have fairly sophisticated uh, content sharing within Milo. So when you edit your league landing page, there's this whole subscription setting where you can subscribe to other leagues on Milo. Uh, so if I want to subscribe to material coming from uh, the US league, or the California League. I'm just going to do the US because it'll be smaller. Um, so you can choose those. And let me actually, oh, why not? We'll just do California too because California's got a ton of stuff. And let's do um, events. Let's do Los Angeles. And so if I go ahead and publish this change, and I'm going to have to write a note subscribing. That's for moderation purposes, which I can certainly show you. Okay, now if I go into my calendar, I'll see Los Angeles events as well. And I didn't have to do any work. And now I have a much more thorough website that's integrating events coming from Los Angeles into my feed. Um, if I go to action alerts, I'll start seeing both the California and US action alerts as well. And again, I didn't do any work. I just subscribed to that content. And your content is available for subscription as well by other leagues in Milo. Thank you, Rain. And here's a great follow-up question um, that you touched upon briefly. What exactly is moderation state and how is it used? Can we <laughs> review that? <laughs> yes. All right. So there is some documentation up about this. This is this is the most complicated part of Milo. It's the part that gets people into trouble. Um, and we teetered between offering it and not offering it because it created a much more complicated UI, um, but it also is a hugely powerful piece of uh, functionality for you. So we decided to keep it. Uh, so here's what happens. When you have a piece of content, you'll see up here at the top, this is a piece of content. This is actually the default content that came out of the, um, out of the box setup. And at the top here, as the webmaster, I view published, new draft, and moderate. If I click on moderate, I will see the entire history of this piece of content, all the edits and who did those edits. Now, there really is no history. There's just the date that I created it, which was the date that I created the league because it automatically created when I created the league. But let's say now I actually want to edit it. I would click on new draft. There's no edit button. I have to click on new draft. And now let's uh, let's just have fun here and put an image in here. Do I have any files in here? And no, I have I have PDFs, but I don't have um, any images. I want an image, so I'm going to go grab somebody else's image. This looks like a nice one. I'm just grabbing the very first thing. You're very briefly getting a little hint into the um, into the media browser. And I'm going to submit this. 
And now I have a great image right here in the middle of my content. Let's say that I also want to, I'm just gonna do a couple other things because this is a great opportunity to show you formatting. Um, maybe I also want to highlight this information right here because it's really important. Oops, I need to make sure that I select the whole paragraph. So I'm gonna undo that, select the whole paragraph. And oh, fun, I love that the thing that I'm trying to show you has an issue. That's perfect. Um, so anyway, we can play with it all we want, but I don't want to waste time on that, on figuring out why that issue is there. So instead, I'm going to make this special. And that looks nice. And then I'm going to maybe link to something here, just so you can see some of this. Um, actually, I'll go, yeah, that looks good. I think I'm linking to the content itself, but that doesn't matter. It just kind of shows you what's possible. Um, I'll attach this to an issue, maybe voter registration. And that all sounds good. So now I'm going to leave some notes, which I don't have to do, but it's nice for the next person following. I'll leave a note saying um, added an image, some special text, and a link. And now here under moderation state, I'm going to leave this as draft because I want you to see what happens. I could take it straight to published if I wanted to, but I'm going to leave it as draft and save it. Now I'm looking at the draft version of this content. And if I scroll down to the bottom, it shows me here review or revision state as draft. And I have an option right here to publish this piece of content if I want to. If I take a look at this as the public, it looks just like it used to. So I can view my draft, which shows me that nice formatting I put up at the top. It shows me this cool image. It shows me this link that I added. All of that's working nicely, but the public is seeing the old content. I can use this to have somebody else go in and edit, or not edit, but uh, review what I did to make sure that it's good. And I can also use this to kind of work in bits and chunks. And then later on, I can go ahead and edit the draft some more if I want to add more elements to it or make more changes. Once I'm happy, I can, let me scroll down here, I can publish it when I save it. So I can just switch this to published and then save. And that will take it immediately to the view, to the public version and get rid of the draft state entirely. The other option that I can do is I can go to the moderate tab and look at the history of this content. Now you can see more history. So it was created a long time ago, well not, not that long ago actually, but it was created. And then the public version, the green one where it says this is the published version, it tells me when it was made and who made it and any notes that are included. There are no notes on this one. But then this is the draft version that's waiting to replace the published version. It has some notes. It tells me who made the change, when it was made, and I can revert to a different draft. I can view another draft. I can also, there's a link here to compare versions. So I can compare the difference between two versions to take a look at what's going on. And I can go ahead and set this one to published and it will replace the public version. So now, this is the public draft or the public version and that draft state is gone. So this gives you a lot of power in seeing the history of content. You don't need to use it. I want to remind you that you can save directly to published. You just have to remember to switch your moderation state to published before you save it. But if you use the draft version, it gives you the ability to work on something in bits and pieces. Um, and whether or not you use the draft version, you will always have all of the history of a piece of content stored under the Moderate tab. Super helpful, Rain, and I love Karen's comment. She said, holy moly, that's powerful. <laughs> <laughs> it is, and unfortunately with power comes a more complicated UI. So if you have questions, there's a lot of documentation. There's at least one video, and, uh, and then there's milo at lwvc.org. <laughs> 
And I can say that many leagues do find this very useful when they have multiple webmasters. Um, so you may find this really works well for your league um, and you may find you don't need it. So um, the, both of those are available to you. Um, and I have a follow-up question regarding feeds. Um, okay. Nell has asked, so I can subscribe to a non-Milo feed. Can you yes talk and about no. doing that? <laughs> yeah, the answer to that is, is both a yes and no. You can't do that on your own. You would need to contact uh, Milo at lwvc.org, which is Elizabeth and Amaris and me, and tell us what feed you're trying to subscribe to and where you want it. And then we would have to make sure that that feed has enough information. And then we would just create a setup so that it goes into your um, so, so that it goes into your Milo site. Uh, a good example, you know, California, like the state website is actually separate from Milo uh, because it was built, you know, before Milo was ready. And, and Elizabeth, if I'm saying too much, stop me, but California has been prioritizing getting Milo to be the awesome system it should be as opposed to moving itself to Milo. Um, so for that reason, we have um, we have actually set up external feeds coming into Milo. So all of the California content that's in there is coming in through feeds that we've subscribed to. So that's completely doable, but the feed needs to be a good source. Um, it can't be a crummy source. And unfortunately, we have no control over that. So we would have to take a look at what you wanted to bring in um, and you just need to tell us the source feed and where it's going so that we can make sure that that fit can actually happen. So um, Nell's follow-up comment was, okay, right, there are some that are already approved, I guess, and, and I suppose that is one way that you could say it. Um, and she mentioned that the LWV US is not a Milo feed. Is it allowed automatically? Well, actually, um, in the we are working towards it being a, all of their content being um, an automatic feed, okay. really, um, because there is a Milo LWV US site that we have created that LWV US currently has been just posting priority items which have included the action alerts that you can mm -hmm. subscribe to. Um, so yeah, they're heading over there right now. So this yes. is the, the US one. So you can subscribe to this one. Uh, they don't have feeds yet available for uh, for us to set up in an automated way, but they are actively working on those. So we expect to have those sometime. I, I'm not gonna say soon because I know that they have a lot, that they're a lot of functionality that they're trying to create and, and st stuff that they're trying to service, but it's definitely on their list and, and they are taking it seriously. Uh, so we will have those in the Milo system soon, but until then, they're just doing it manually. And I'm sure that the more that they have to do manually, the higher it'll go on their priority list because they don't they probably don't want to be doubling up the work either. Right. That's working very well. And I do have to give a shout out to LDV US. They've been very supportive of this project mm -hmm. and they're yeah. very grateful we've taken on this sort of role in supporting all the, the local leagues, um, state and local leagues throughout the United States. Um, and I don't have any new questions yet, but I um, we have about 11 minutes left. So um, I want to throw out a couple of things I'd love for Rain to show off that I think are pretty incredible about um, Milo. And one of those items are uh, include our uh, media library um, and our wonderful slideshow function. So I'm wondering if Rain, you wouldn't mind showing off one of our wonderful slideshows um, and how to access the media sure. library, shared Oops, media library. I just library. switched back. I meant to stay as um, that demo user. Um, what you're seeing me do right now is masquerade as a regular webmaster. And it's something that only Elizabeth Amrits and I can do. Oh, and a couple of people, uh, a couple of other system supporters. But um, so you don't need to worry about somebody pretending to be you. <laughs> but um, But you can keep in mind that any one of us can pretend to be you, which can be very helpful for you if you're trying to troubleshoot something. You're like, why won't this work? We can we can pretend to be you to actually troubleshoot it. Um, all right, so I'm now back in Demo City and I can actually uh, show off both of the things that Elizabeth asked for simultaneously. So what I'm gonna do is I wanna actually have a slideshow on the homepage. You know, if I look back at, um, one of our demo leagues, or you know, one of the the leagues that um, that we like to show off. You know, we like to show off 
Los Angeles. California has now uh, done a slideshow as well. You'll see these nice slideshows that are right there on the home page. And uh, if we go to California, you'll see the same thing. Uh, but Demo City doesn't have that nice slideshow on the home page right now. So if I want to create a slideshow, all I need to do is um, right here under Administer League Site, one of the content types, each of these is a separate type of content with different fields and, and behaviors. Um, if I click on Add Slideshow Item, it allows me to add one slide. So each, each slide is a single slideshow item. And I'll go ahead and give it a title. Uh, let me grab some Lauren Upsum here. And um, I will give it a link. Um, LWVUS is awesome. And then we'll just link to their site. We'll open it in a new window. We'll create a little caption here. It's probably much more text than I want in a caption. Remember that people don't read on the web, so the less text you give them, the better. I'll take it straight to published. And so that's all the content that I want on there, but now I actually want an image for my slideshow. So what I'm gonna do is click on this browse button and it's gonna open up the media library. Any of your image fields or your um, attachment fields, which allow for PDFs, will open the, the library itself. The library is a shared resource. When you first open it, typically you will get this upload tab right here, which is where you can upload something new into the system. So you can choose file and now you go into your, um, your operating system and you find something. The next tab that you have here that you wanna use with care is you can find a URL for an image on the web and then you can transfer that to Milo. When I say you want to use that with care, what I mean is you want to make sure that you have the rights to use that image. Otherwise, you're, you're violating intellectual property rights. Uh, but the next three tabs are where the real power of this system come in. My League's Files is a tab that will show you any files that your league has uploaded. Now, my league hasn't actually uploaded any files yet, so I don't see anything here. My files will show me, and by the way, my league's files, that would include files that your other webmasters for your league have uploaded. Whereas my files will only show you the images and PDFs that you have uploaded, not ones that anybody else has uploaded. Again, I haven't uploaded anything yet, so nothing shows here. But both of these tabs would look exactly like the all files tab with the exception of what's displayed in there. And the All Files tab shows you all of the media that's been uploaded on Milo. You have the ability to filter this if you're looking for something specific. So let's say that I'm looking for historical images. I can filter, or, or if I'm looking for something having to do with voting rights laws, hopefully there's something that actually contains both of these because I'm going to keep both of those filters. So I can go ahead and apply, and there we go. We do actually have two images that fit those two classifications, historical image and voting rights laws. Now these classifications are determined when the person who uploads them uploads that, that file. They have to indicate what issues or media tags or uh, description is related to this image to make it searchable. So if you don't want your content to be searchable, don't add any tags to it except for the, uh, the essential tags. But if you do want your content to be searchable, then you would add a nice description and nice tags to it so that it can be found and shared between people. Um, and then I can just go ahead and select that. And now I have an image in here and I can go ahead and save this. I'll save it straight to published. I've created a slide item. And if I go back to my home page, there it is. And if I put in another slide item, then it'll start to rotate automatically. If I want to manage my slide items, then under Administer League Site, I'll click on Manage Content, where I see all of the content on my site. Right now, it's filtered down to specific type of content from an author that's not part of this league. So I'll remove those filters, and then I see all of the content on my site, and I can manage any of it right from here. 
I can edit it. I can do anything I want with it. So that's both the slideshow functionality and the media library. Thank you, Rain. And I have a follow-up question about the images. Karen asked, is there a way to get a bundle of images from the National League and upload them all at once? Generally, we don't do the bulk uploads because as Rain was showing us here, you know, we use these tags to help things show up um, and optimize our search engine functionality. So we don't do those bulk bulk uploads. However, um, we do have lots of images from the National League already in there, um, mm -hmm. and you can use the images from other leagues. And if there are images that you feel as though you need, please ask us and we will get them in there because if you need them, no doubt other leagues will probably need them as well. Um, and images are so very important to our websites and sharing, um, so we're, we're happy to take care of that. Um, yeah, I think the real answer to that question is if you have a bundle of images from the National League that you want in there that aren't already in there, because they might already be there. Right. Um, but if they're not already in there, send them to, send them to Milo at lwvc.org and they'll put them in for you. Absolutely. Um, and then another question from Judy uh, Mayer. She asked if a user can see analytics of their own Milo site. Yes, mm -hmm. you can. Uh, Google Analytics um, is embedded into each each and every site. Um, and right now you need to ask me for your reports and I will run them for you, but I am steadily working through each league so that we have an automatic report that goes to you every month that includes the information, basic information we think that is most valuable to you, which includes uh, page views, referrals, um, time on site, numbers of users and unique unique users versus um, all all page views and that sort of detail. Um, we hope to in the future offer sort of a Google Analytics training um, so that people know how to use these this information and traffic results to their benefit. Um, I can tell you that in the case of the um, Texas League, they were very surprised to find um, from their Google Analytics that they were getting much more referral to their Milo site via Google than they had been previously. So that was great information to tell us that yes, in fact, the search engine optimization efforts that we have been employing are working. So that's very exciting. Um, and that traffic was um, doing very, very well. So again, yes, we will do that. Um, I'm hoping by the end of the summer, early fall, I'll get everybody on an automated system to have this, these reports um, sent um, to them. Um, if you do um, need a report, again, just contact me. Um, you can do it through the Milo email, or you're welcome to use my personal email, which is elesley at lwvc.org, and I will send you those fantastic reports. And it's always exciting to see um, what people are searching for, who's referring to you. You, you, you may be surprised to find out who's got a link uh, on their website to yours. Um, Another question here, just to clarify, and I think this is a great question for everyone to hear um, from Emily. She said, just to clarify, our Milo landing page will be an RSS widget embedded on the front where we subscribe to other leagues' posts, and once they post, it pops up on our public feed. I think that's a great way to, to, to describe it, generally speaking. <laughs> um, and you can subs also subscribe to other leagues' posts. I'm not sure if we clarified that before, but you can subscribe to other leagues, um, nearby leagues' events as well. And I don't know if, Rain, you have an example handy that you could show of, of a league doing that. Well, I, I actually just did that with Demo City. So um, Los Angeles, just subscribed to Los Angeles from Demo City. Um, and Los Angeles is doing it as well, I believe. Um, but, um, or, you know, Glendale Burbank is, is definitely doing it because I just subscribed to them, I think. Um, and Emily's okay, asking, no, I didn't subscribe them, but yeah. Um, Emily is asking, so then do we have to be subscribed to our own feed? Uh, no. No, I, I'm not sure if go. that's what the no, question that you intended, but I don't think so. <laughs> No, you, yeah, you don't need to subscribe to your own feed. That's automatic. Um, here's an example of Action Alerts. So Glendale Burbank is subscribed to Action Alerts from the US and California. Um, 
Um, and here, I think this will be our final question for today. Um, and again, if you have more questions, feel free to email us, or again, you can go to our Google group and ask the question because it may end up benefiting um, another person in the support group of which we have about uh, 100 people now. Um, and our final question comes from Jane Blackie, and she says, so we'd have editing access via our login, correct? Mm -hmm. Correct. Yes. Um, you would have access, um, editing access. Um, and again, the masquerading that Rain showed you earlier where we can pretend to be you, we use that often to help troubleshoot or um, look at a problem you say you might be having. Um, so that's a great segue for me to remind everyone that if you do have a problem um, or you found something that's not working properly, um, we have a wonderful ticketing system called Freshdesk that we use. So when you email us at milo at lwvc, it creates a ticket which shows us what's going on with you. Um, so say, for example, you um, some the formatting is wrong and it's overlapping you will email us and say, I'm having an overlapping problem on my website. A ticket will be created, we will be alerted, and we can immediately work to fix it. And we will either masquerade as you so we can recreate the problem ourselves, or you're welcome to send us a screenshot um, in your email attached to it and as much detail as you can provide, and that will help us troubleshoot and get your problem solved right away. There are three of us that review the tickets, uh, myself, Amaris and Rain when we assign it to her <laughs> um, if we're not able to solve it. Um, so we usually get back to you, you know, in 24 hours or less, unless it's over a weekend, you may have a little bit more of a delay, um, but we will get back to you as soon as possible to make sure that your problems are solved right away. Um, I'd like to think that we have a fantastic customer service team as I am part of it. Um, but if email does not work for you, you're also welcome to call us at any time. You can call our state league office and we will talk you through whatever challenges you might be having um, and see if we can get you a, a resolution on the phone or we will do it uh, again through our tech team. So with that, I'd like to say thank you to everyone for joining us here in this webinar today. Um, after this webinar is completed, you will receive an email in the next 24 hours and it will include a link to this webinar if you wanna go back and review what you have um, seen here today with Rain. Um, so thank you so much everyone for being here. Thank you Rain for being such an amazing advocate of this um, product in Drupal and Milo and of course for the league. So thank you everyone, have a great day.